Everybody in here has got a big one down below. Don't you think so? It's Monday Night Raw. Oh, I'm sorry, folks. That's what they got for you. I'm sorry. That's what they got for you. <laughs> That's what they got for you tonight, ma'am. Unbelievable. That's what the WWE has for you guys tonight. Unbelievable. It's the Joe Cronin show. I doubt anybody is awake at this point. I got to believe most people fell asleep during this raw. I can't even imagine that people caught this. When raw, raw, SmackDown, WWE, or AEW end, tune in to the Joe Cronin show. Live, live, live on YouTube for review and reaction. Joe Cronin and Jake break down all the action. All of it. The Joe Cronin Show, your source for wrestling opinions, news, and insanity. A wrestling podcast with attitude. Mature audiences only. Join our community of over 70,000 people. Subscribe free on YouTube to The Joe Cronin Show. Well, that was a show tonight, man. Uh, that was a show for suicide promotion. Man, it felt like, dude, it feel, I feel like I just watched a five-hour show. Like, I'm not even going to be, I'm not even going to lie. That felt like a five-hour show tonight. I straight up, I swear to God, I just watched a five-hour show. Thanks very much, WWE. Thanks very much. The uh, The opening was promising, too. That's the funny thing. The opening to this show tonight was promising. And all I could think the entire time I was watching this show tonight was, man, I could be playing Diablo. I could be playing my pud. I could, I could be playing with the dog. I could be playing with my wife's vagina. I could be outside cleaning up all the shit that blew around everywhere from the gigantic storm that we had earlier today. I could be staring at my neighbor's wife down the street who's kind of hot, who looks out the window every night like she's bored, doing this. Uh, you want it, baby? Let's go. Huh? I could, I could call my old friend JD up on his phone. And just fucking say horrible shit to him until he hangs up on me. Just for fun. And record it and put it up on Patreon. Okay? I could call my lawyer. And try to figure out some of the bullshit that I'm involved in. I could call the federal government and the, and the IRS. And, uh, you know, start trying to dwindle down that stuff I owe them. I could give a call back to some of the companies that called me about working for them. But really, the biggest thing is I could have jacked off to something on anyporn.com. But I didn't do that. Instead, I washed this trash. And there's a lot to talk about. The first thing we have to talk about is the Patreon. Guys, Corrupted is up. Off the rails, a new episode is up. And if you want to keep this channel alive, please check out the Patreon. 30 hours of bonus content a month, except for last month. We actually dipped way below that. So this month we'll be back again with Vengeance. Okay, there's going to be a bunch of shit on the Patreon. Now, I mean, we always have a lot of stuff on there, but it just wasn't quite 30 hours a month. It was, we were, we were like 27 hours or 25 or something like that, but usually we go over. So more is coming. I have so much audio that we haven't even released that we got to get up on the Patreon. Tons of stuff that's not wrestling, so you'll actually laugh and probably be somewhat entertained a little bit. And me just belittling Jake DeMarco. That's one of the funnest things that we do on there. Right, Jake? We belittle. I belittle you. Absolutely. A lot of, a lot of you know, 
terrible words said and just beat me down to a pulp, and I keep coming back like a you know dog without a home. But, From Connecticut. Hey, we're here, and Raw abused me worse than you could. My God. And the beginning was, was promising, too, as you said. It started decent. I will then... abuse you. I will straight up abuse. I am so fired up right now, dude. I will sexually abuse you, Jake DeMarco. I, I'm where a you man. usually are. I'm dead. This killed me. This was, I, I am just like, oh, my God. Anything that started to be decent, they made into a, a, a just a total bonkers scenario that made no sense. All the crap that they decide to go through with. And then you hear things from a lot of different places, but Fightful was the first one to say that this show wasn't even finalized till 25 minutes before Raw started. Well, it felt that way. Yeah. It felt like it was being written as it was going, so that makes perfect sense. It felt like it shouldn't have been written at all. That's what I felt about well, it. Well, yeah, absolutely, but... Don't write this show at all. Listen, I, I want to say thank you to Trevor, who became a $5 patron earlier. And again, I am pushing the Patreon. I am pushing the Patreon tonight. Tonight is the night to beat up your neighbor, take their credit card, and become a patron. 300 of you guys are, but we really got to get back to 400. That means we need 50 of you guys to go jump on the Patreon and check out all the shit that we have for you, okay? I mean, I'm talking about tonight. Tonight, it is brutally important. Or Christmas is dead, folks. But anyway, no, you're right. It was So you're telling me last minute. They always say this, though, even on the shows that are never okay or nothing's ever good. Oh, you know, last minute it was written. What's different about what Sean Ross, my eyes are too close together, is saying about this versus yeah. every other time it sucks? It's a common occurrence. It's it's usually happening, but it seems like it's getting closer and closer to airtime. You know, it used to be an hour before, then it was a half an hour before. Now it's 25 minutes before. You know, we constantly hear it just creeping closer to that start time. So, yeah, well, it, it's worrisome. And apparently a lot of this was out of their control, ugh. whatever that means. So what? it could have been, you know, COVID related. It could have been a, a number of different well, issues. What does that but, mean? I mean, was someone people were missing that were supposed to be there? God knows. Ooh. We haven't heard anything yet, but where's Alistair like Black? Was there. Where the fuck Alistair, is Alistair Black? That was one of the things we didn't get to talk about with Thanksgiving, but it, it he's getting apparently kind of railroaded in the back. They have no longer anything to do with, you know, for him creative wise, but obviously his wife caused a great stir and ended up Yeah, but this fired. happened before that. Like someone brought that up to me and I said, well, you know what though? This was three weeks of this before she was fired. Yeah, no doubt. So I think that kind of cemented that he really has no chance. He was already in limbo before she was, you know, opening her mouth and causing issues backstage. And I'm not blaming her. That's not what I'm saying, but you know, it's, I'm glad she stood up for herself. Granted, it sucks that you lost your job, but yeah, her husband's definitely even lower, you know, moved down on the totem pole after that happened because, I mean, they're, they're viewed as a connective item no matter what. And lo and behold, he was high up on, um, what's his name, Paul Heyman's list. And oh, once no. Paul Heyman was no longer in charge of Raw, they had, you know, we were seeing him week in, week out. Once he was no longer in charge of Raw, they removed Aleister Black's eye from well, his head, and then he was no longer fighting on TV. So, And we've also seen Paul Heyman have the opposite effect on people, where Paul Heyman's suggestion of this guy's great actually hurts the person. It's, yeah, it had hurt many of the stars that they were building because he was he was working with a lot of the newer talent, and then once he was no longer the head of Raw, they stopped you know, everything dead in its tracks and really, you know, stop the forward momentum with anyone younger. So, yep. That's something we've heard over the years, multiple, like going back years that Heyman is so, um, you know, obsessed in meetings and gets too excited about people. And then that like turns Vince off almost like Tommy back in the day on my show being like, Joe, you should do this. And yeah, you should do this. Joe, you should do that. I'm talking about Tommy Yancey. Joe, you should do that. And you're just, and you're just like, Nope, I'm going to freak out. Like, I'm going to freak out on this shit. And that is exactly what happens with Vince and Heyman. Now that Heyman's not there, we got Bruce Pritchard. Listen, I've always liked Bruce Pritchard as somebody I think he should be on the advisory board. I think he's one of the best, if not the best, timer ever. Timekeeper, showrunner, producer of the show. Just amazing. But when it comes to being full creative, yikes. I don't understand it. Um, and what the frig was Riddle doing tonight? Whoever, I what was don't that? Know. 
That was embarrassingly bad. You know, you know, at times we say like, oh, these promos are cringy or these are silly or, and I hate using that word as much as we say it, but this was just putrid, awful, terrible, nasty, horrid, my God, embarrassing. Wow. I mean, what so he said tonight, awful. he was, so, he's so bad on the mic with what they, or what they give him. Cause I don't think he is that bad on the mic. He's worse. He wasn't in NXT. He was fine right. in NXT. He right. Had that like lively, you know, stoner kind of gimmick going on and it worked. The, it's like he's so stupid. He must be cute thing from Airheads with uh, Pip. Yeah. He's like, he got Pip. the Bobby Fish, you know, thing going and that was, you know, a huge merch seller as well. How much fish can Bobby Fish fry if Bobby Fish, you know, that stuff. And it, it, he was fun. He was just enjoyable, like a goof, but it wasn't. Now they're making him a parody of himself. It's it's just ridiculous. Dude, um, this this show tonight. I mean, listen, let's let's just start right at the beginning. The fact that, well, first of all, we got donations coming in. I do see those. Let me play one real quick. We'll play one and we'll come back. The show started all right. That's the good thing. Billy the, Billy the Fridge. Billy the Fridge. I would have actually given Raw a somewhat a K rating like a 4.5 out of 10, but the tending was absolute trash. I don't understand why they have to make Styles and Miz look so, so weak. Are we are really supposed to believe AJ has a shot at TLC? Bullshit. Yeah, I don't even care about that, too. It's like, listen, book uh, AJ stronger, please. Yeah, AJ right now is sort of booked like the, a little bit like Seth Rollins, the the shit eating cartoon character heel guy. You know, he's not even booked like the good Shawn Michaels when he had a bodyguard. He's booked like a real shit eater, like I mean, like a real shit eater. It don't even seem real enough. But what's good is the guys are gonna have a good match in the ring. I mean, so that's that's the good news, I guess. But Jesus. Um, I, you know, I, I don't know, man. I mean, what real quick with what he said, what do you think about, um, AJ Styles, how his character is, do you mind what, what what do you think about his character? I, I, I like his character to a certain extent, but like the way he's acting is fine, but the way he's being booked is piss poor. I mean, he doesn't seem like a person that that's, you know, believable at all whatsoever that can go ahead and beat Drew McIntyre, even, even with his bodyguard on his side. They've made it seem like he's not able to get the job done at all. Mm -hmm. Even walking out of a win the Survivor Series, they didn't have him look exemplary there, and he kind of fell into the victory. You know, at this, like it just, it it doesn't feel as warranted. You know, all right, got the phenomenal forearm on Riddle to to get the victory there, but even still, like it didn't feel like he was that dominating in the match. It just, oh, he picked up the scraps and just happened to get lucky. Yeah, it really. So it really they, they haven't given him, and then everything that happened with the main event that was just even more ridiculous. They make the briefcase look ridiculous. They make everything look like a joke, including AJ being carried off by his massive bodyguard. I chuckled at McIntyre calling him a bitch in the beanstalk or something. That that something along those lines was funny, but you're the bitch in the beanstalk. I don't even know. I didn't miss that part, but uh, I wish I heard that because that would have been pretty funny to hear. I missed it though. Um, let's talk about, so, so I mean, listen, I mean, I'll just rattle, I'll just rattle off some of this. This is, I'll just give you some of this before we start at the beginning and go through this. I'll just give you some of it. First of all, what the fuck is Jeff Hardy doing a swanton off the corner of the ring when the steps are right below the table? That was dumb. Why wasn't the table set up in the rampway? We'll get back to that in a few minutes. That was yeah, stupid. Yeah, no doubt. Nia Jax, why is Nia Jax running at someone who's holding the rope open for them for like 10 hours and then she just dives through and looks like a fucking idiot? Nia Jax sucks, her fucking Lana sucks, and they're all in a ring together. I don't yeah, care Nia about these people. Yeah, Nia you know, brutalized all by herself. You know, she looks around. She's like, oh, wait, I was supposed to be hit there and then dives through the ropes. Dude, Awful. these people are retarded. Like, these people suck. Like, I'm sorry, man. This is not good. Nothing. I know they want Hardy to do things that look painful because he doesn't mind hurting his body, you know. So, oh, he'll land on the stairs and it'll, but make it look like it makes sense. Like he's not just going to hurt himself. Like he's trying to do something, and then Elias gets out of the way. Wait, you think okay, they planned him? Sense. They planned for him to hit his head on the steps? I I don't know. I think they wanted it to look like he was, you know, in peril there, but it it was botched badly. So wait, what do you it, mean? It, it didn't wait, make wait sense for him to do it either, though. No, I, see, I don't see it that way. I see that he just said. 
I'm going to do the swanton and set it in somebody and they set it up there. And he, and whether yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. He doesn't mind hurting himself, but it doesn't really make sense knowing that. No, he but I don't think that they, more. they did not plan for him to hurt himself. They didn't plan for Oh, him to, you think it wasn't planned. I thought it was, I looked at it as it was planned. They planned for him to hit his head on the steel stairs. Not his head, but the way he was going to land. I think they wanted him to look like he had a hard landing. I don't think they expected it to be that hard, but I just think somebody didn't think about the stairs being that close and he kind of undershot the table a little bit. I don't think that was planned at all, but I yeah. don't, I mean, if they did, so it, I mean, you're telling me we can't do chair shots, but Hey, let's plan. So he lands on the stairs. Like, I don't think that that was planned. I, I can I, see with Hardy. I, I mean, that he's just so willing to hurt himself at times, but it just doesn't make sense when he does certain maneuvers, you know, like when he climbs the top of the cage and jumps down, there's no one there. You already knew there was no one there, but you have to finish the spot. But you know what? Things like that. that he does it, it just, but I'm not going to shit on it because I see people crying about that everywhere. I'm not going to cry about it. It looked fucking crazy. So at least that was oh, it cool. Looked crazy, but that entertained me at least. At least I was entertaining. Jeff's insane. Like you just did a swanton off the top of the led post and on the corner of the outside of the ring, which is weird. So I've never seen that. So, you know, I actually like that. It's just, but it does make you go, okay, against, that's just, that's not one of those things I want to rage about. It's just one of those things that's like, okay, so against Elias in a goofy, like, banjo match or whatever the hell they called this, he does this, like, probably one of the most risky things of the year. Like that yeah. was probably like I, I don't think that they wanted him to hit his head. That's not what I'm saying. But I think okay. they they planned on him taking that hard impact. Yeah, like they they know he'll put himself through crazy scenarios and all this shit. So they don't they don't mind doing it. Well, that's but why like I, why wasn't that that should have been set up in the rampway? Like it, yeah, it should have been moved. That's what I'm saying is ridiculous. You know that they they why would you willingly risk yourself like that? You know if I was the wrestler, I'm like oh the stairs are close, and if I don't hit this perfect, you know Jeff so, they they can tell Jeff to do these things though because he seemingly never never argues with any of these stunts. You know and he my, just goes for it. My so. opinion is they plan the whole thing out. And they go, yeah, we'll put the table on the outside with all the stuff on it, and you're going to jump all off the, the post. Yeah, yeah. he goes, I want to, or he probably planned, I want to jump off the post through it, you know what I mean? And, you know, but you could have set it up the other way, but then that would have looked obvious that he was going to, you know what I mean? I don't know. It was, I, I, I'm assuming the whole thing was planned. I mean, but it's just, and you know, you maybe because the only other thing you could think is that the guy who set the table up, set the table up in the in the wrong spot or wasn't quite or it didn't matter it just had to be near the post and maybe Hardy just said it doesn't matter as long as it's near the post you know and then the guy puts it over there and it's like oh well it should have been over here but whatever I'll I'll still dive through it and so maybe that happened but most likely WWE normally plans these things out pretty well so most likely he planned for it to be there so and it was just his it might have been his fucking idea that's the thing is a lot of people are going to be like, oh, my God, they're going to kill him. He might have been the one that wanted to do it. Probably. Exactly. As I'm saying, he's always so willing. It just it's a stupid move to do as a wrestler, knowing that, you know, you're going to more than likely end up hurting yourself. So when when they do certain things and it always seems to be Hardy's one of the, the common offenders, they don't go ahead and hurt themselves. So. Kratos is like, I'm going to draw up 10 yeah. grand next. <laughs> Didn't he do this like <laughs> then a couple of years ago? He say that or something. I thought so, but yeah. I liked Elias electrifying himself. That looked funny, you know. It, it was yeah, that was comically hilarious. sold, but it was good. Unfortunately, the announcers didn't sell it. No, they suck. They 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 the sold things it. that should be oversold, yeah. like him hitting his head or like you know getting electrocuted. I know you don't always want to pay attention to the botches, but when someone lands like that, you can't really ignore it as much. And with them, you know, the electrocution part, they made it sound like it was nothing. Right, he, they Elias even, sold they it really it. well too. They didn't sell it at all. They didn't even laugh about it. Like, did he just get? I think he just got electrocuted. You think there were sparks coming out of the speaker? Well, now that some, and yeah, and they went into his body, like or something. None of that. They didn't sell it until the uh it, the re replay. He goes in yeah. and 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 you know uh, Elias got shocked there. Yeah, it's like picture in picture for them to realize what's up. Yeah, like oh my no god, idea. he just we do we we just saw a, a guy get electrocuted on Raw, and now he's getting hit. I mean, this is crazy. You know, anything just no acknowledgement that the guy was just electrocuted. Nothing, no sold. What like a hundred percent no sold by the commentary when when that would have been the thing that made it funny. Like he was shaking, and it was that was kind of funny, and it was funny. Like it was getting funny, and all it needed was somebody to say, like oh my god, a. He's shaking. Well, he just he just got electrocuted. Did you see the sparks? Yeah, I I mean Elias or Elias just got electrocuted. 
Like, and, and it's like nothing, no acknowledgement of it. We just watched him do it, but no, nobody says, did he just get electrocuted? Well, look, he's shaking, you know, anything. That would have yeah, that sparks flying. That would have made you kind of laugh or chuckle a little bit. Like that acknowledgement, that syncing up of what you're seeing versus what they're acknowledging, they acknowledge none of it until the replay later. Who gives a fuck later on on the replay? You idiots. Who's on fucking by commentary then, tonight? Tom by Phillips? By then you already missed it. Yeah, we had um, Phillips, Saxton, Samoa Joe. Samoa Joe's okay. I mean, he, he's not Yeah, bad, he's all right. Why is he not wrestling still? I mean, last we heard, he was fine and dandy as far as health goes with everything. Don't make him go. I mean, because he's doing so good here. That's why. They got nothing. Uh, they don't even know what they're doing with Alistair. They got a guy who's got had a fucking epic entrance and a, and a guy who looked pretty fucking for real. And they took that away from him. Yeah, and Vince probably thinks, well, I've already got The Fiend. I don't need this this guy. I don't get it, you know. And yeah, now of course he's gonna, not. That's why I wish he got the approval to go back to NXT at least. Yeah, he's going to get the approval to go to AEW. It's going to happen. And it's well, like God knows how long till that can be a possibility because I don't see them letting him go. They'll just put him on ice. Can you imagine that they have this guy with this mis mystical kind of entrance? He seems like a badass. And they have nothing. Not only do they have nothing for him, they can't figure out how to write him. And then they don't even pay for his music. I mean, that's why they didn't pay for it. They don't what even care about him. Oh, a little bit of the bubbly. That's it. That's Want it. some bubbly? Look at this stuff. Oh, oh, a little bit of the bubbly. That's it. That's no matter what they ever do, all you're going to do is say it sucks. Every week. It wasn't that bad. You just try say it is for your crappy review. You're an idiot. Don't even try ratings line cause ratings been up for them and ratings don't matter as much as they did. You're a retard, faggot idiot. Never donate to me again and fucking kill yourself. Fuck you. Don't ever donate to me again, you fucking retard idiot. I've been saying this for fucking seven years, and the ratings go down and down and down. They do matter, you fucking stupid idiot. They matter a lot, you fucking idiot, because they went from 4 million to 3 million to 2 million to 1.6 million, and the wrestling industry is dying. Go fuck. Fuck yourself in the face, you stupid fucking twat idiot. I've been telling you this for years, and it's been going down and down and down. And guess what? WrestleMania was good. We gave it a good rating, especially for COVID. We gave it extra credit for COVID, you fucking idiot. This show sucked tonight. If you like this show, you're a fucking cum sucker. You're a fucking cock fucker. You're a fucking rainbow fucker. You're a fucking goddamn cornholing, butt pumping midget fuck. Fuck you! Go suck a dick! Go suck fucking Sean Ross fucking eyeballs too close to get his dick! Go suck Loogie's stupid fucking New York cunt! You fucking idiot! What the fuck are you watching? What are you fucking 10? Never donate to me again! Never donate to me again! You fuck! You blind fucking Piece of shit, fuck! I hope you fucking, I hope America goes to war with fucking China. I hope we go to war with China soon, motherfucker, when Biden gets elected or gets in office. And I hope you or your fucking children are drafted. And I hope those fucking goddamn little people chop your family up in the fucking draft's first fucking war engagement, you motherfucker. I hope your fucking kids end up in the Yellow Sea when they turn 18 and get drafted, motherfucker. And it ends up on CNN and you see it, you piece of shit. The Yellow Sea... The Red Sea, the China Sea, I want to see your face when you see one of your kids who got drafted because we have to go to war with China float past your fucking head and you're in your living room going, fuck you. I want to see your face when they come for the fucking water coolers in the WWE again. I want to see what happens when they come for the fucking water coolers again, you motherfucker! <laughs> see, even your if, kid if you will be like smaller! Actual, you want actual facts and statistics. I mean, if you go by their last uh, financial report and breakdown... Not I'm going to lose my fucking mind! <laughs> 
not only do you know investors have specific worries, but most of those are that WWE's lack of major draws before the pandemic began, AEW being opposite, you know, in another alternative to their Wednesday uh, programming, disgruntled superstars, a lack of growth since 2019, and a poor rated TV product overall. So, and that's from investors. WWE is failing, you know, not financially, but in the public eye. You see it. Ratings are down. Superstars aren't happy. Everybody wants to get out. As where it used to be the promised land, you know, the top of the mountain that everybody wanted to, you know, achieve. That was the pinnacle of your career if you made it to the WWE. Now that the titles don't mean shit, the brands don't really differentiate themselves between each other anymore. So everything feels the same. You're left with a dying product, sadly, something that we love that can still be really good that we get glimpses of every now and again. You know, it can still be an entertaining and, and fun to watch show. Uh, for some reason, they just can't get it right. And it's not just us that feels this way. Matt Riddle's a fucking idiot. <clears throat> now, he just comes off Who, as who's a. Who's Matt Riddle? Weird. I know Riddle. I don't know Matt Riddle. Oh, yeah, Riddle. He comes off as a weirdo <laughs> who wants to have sex with other guys and smoke in the locker room, which is fine, but it's just weird. It's like, what do you. What is this? What am I looking at on my TV? I'm going to lose my voice again. I can already feel it. <clears throat> Super Chat. Spaz Phoenix. Party. What up, Spaz? Cheap plug want to hear me actually being nice about AEW? Oh. Tune in for the Winter is Coming preview tomorrow night at 9 p.m. Holy, I'm sure it will be a nice little kickoff before War Games. Now you're going to suck off AEW, Spaz, you pancakes, fucking fake. Pancakes, pancakes, pancakes. Thank you, Spaz Phoenix. $10 coming in. Winter is coming. AEW is going to crush this t this week. I mean, listen. Oh, absolutely. And that'll lead right into Throwdown on the Corrupted YouTube <clears throat> channel. So that'll be perfect. It. Oh, yeah. I forgot. I don't even... I'm not even thinking about it. My head... <laughs> this Raw has made me devoid of fucking goddamn thought, devoid of, of happiness, empathy. Brain I have no cells. empathy. I'm so angry at this Raw... I want to go outside and shake down the bird's nest in my backyard and literally choke the baby chicks in front of their parents. Like, I never would have said that, but this show has done it to me. Thank you, Spaz Phoenix. Joe, it is that time of the month. Time to get stressed out. Oh, yeah. In less than one hour, it will be December 1st, and Patreon will update, and you'll likely lose a few members, but hopefully get them back soon enough. It will happen. Can we plus get more Patreon content this month? Yes, sir. Yeah, we had a lot Absolutely. less. This was our lowest month in content in a while, but we did have a we did have a we had stuff, but we didn't have enough. Man, we had. Well, we so also much had shit. a lot of extra sh like time on shows, you know, when yeah. we were on. So we went longer for a lot of things. A lot of things were three to five hours for shows instead of the usual two or so. Off the rails is up though, guys. Today and uh, corrupted audio is up right now, and we're gonna get some more audio as well. And uh, Joe and I have more of our podcast coming this week too, which will be good. I'm gonna have a heart attack. <clears throat> don't you die on me i'm gonna freak out uh, like we said we'll start off right at the beginning it, it started off with a moment of bliss and i like this uh you know she had a really cool setup for her talk show it was all childlike and and you know supposed to be like that innocent side of her but we know how devious she is so it's a it's a nice bit of contrast there and they really set up how orton was attacked by the fiend and and this is why he's not headed to the triple threat tonight. And, you know, he's been screwed time and time again. Yep. And Orton finally comes out and Bliss just constantly gets under his skin saying, oh, you're in a foul mood. And uh, I wouldn't be in a good mood either if this happened to me. And they recapped how he lost with the Fiend's distraction. And basically Orton figures out that I finally have something that makes the Fiend vulnerable. It's you. And she says, well, you know, I kind of have the same thing. You know, she's playing mind games with him. The fiend starts to come out as soon as he steps close. And she says, you know, he says, see what I mean? And she responds the same thing. See what I mean? So, again, she's parroting and parroting everything that he's saying. And at the end, you know, you hear her say, who's, who's laughing now? And she, you know, Orton keeps saying that as he hands over uh, Alexa Bliss to the fiend. So, interesting segment here. We know the history that they have. I know you're not crazy about the whole, you know, Wyatt family history, but it's something that I've always enjoyed, and I'm curious to see where else they take this. Seems like they've got a lot of mind games to play here. Yeah, I, I liked it, and it made sense that he's like, oh, I think I know what you're vulnerable to. Like, it was, you know, it was something. 
it but was, it also uh, seems like they have a plan in return, knowing that they would think that she makes him vulnerable, but it doesn't seem like that's actually going to be the case because she said to him, you know, so many times in return, is this what you think? You know, you think you're safe. Who's laughing now? These kind of things. It, it, it really seems like they're going to have a, a, a setup in mind for him. Yeah, so they're yeah, going to have they're going to be one step ahead for Randy. It, 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 that's how I'm taking it. Yeah, I um, I don't, I just don't, I don't know, I don't, I don't care that much. But I like, I was entertained by the by what they did, like tonight. I was kind of entertained by what they did. Um, but I don't know where it's going. It's just one of those things. I see something you got, and I know what to do, and that's it. Okay, we'll see what happens. It'll lead to a match, obviously, at TLC with these mm-hmm. two, I'm sure, but. What we get, how we get there. At least you know we got a bit more time, and they'll set up something. I, I hopefully a bit more compelling. So, uh, I mean, yeah. Listen, I mean, the other thing too is, uh, again, the Hardy thing. I did like it because it it was crazy. So, like, I chalked that up as a as a as entertainment. Thanks. I give the show more of credit for the entertaining dive but um, you look at it and go what what are they but what are they doing you know doing that yeah here, but whatever and okay. especially because they've had so many matches these some fun spots here uh they, they went ahead and had the 24 7 champion crew run out and you know everyone's trying to take the belt once they dispatched of all of them they continued on with the match beating the hell out of each other with every musical instrument imaginable. Elias even put uh, guitar picks between his fingers at one point <laughs> to use as a weapon. I thought that was funny. Um, that's when we said Elias tries to, to impale Hardy with a broken guitar neck, and he ends up stabbing it through the PA speaker and electrocutes himself. Uh, the, the pyro on that one was perfectly you know, executed. The timing was great, so it looked like a great sell job. And that's when Hardy has the table that's, you know, stacked in a bunch of, like, the, the small instruments to the side there. And he goes up to dive through the table and ends up hitting his head on the stairs on the outside. And he covers Elias and gets the pin, but it looks like he might have a concussion from that. That was a brutal, brutal landing. So Yeah, luckily he landed. He Like, he already had gone through the table. A lot of momentum was stopped first um, before he kind of hit his head, but... Definitely worried about some soreness in the back. If he's if he's adverse to any concussions, like if I had done that, I would have a concussion, or I would have post concussion sy- symptoms. Because if I bump my head at all now, I get instant fog for who knows how long, and sometimes it's a while. So oh, yeah. I, I, I'd be yeah. jacked up on that. I mean, absolutely. But he maybe he did maybe he's not maybe he's just fine. Maybe he's like, oh, I bang my head, I'm have a bruise, and that's it. You know, hopefully that's really all it was. He yeah, landed. Hopefully. He landed the best you could have landed for how bad that could have been, I guess. So, super chat. Super chat. Super chat. The goon. Didn't watch. I write draw Welsh slash 10. A Welsh out of 10 says the goon. The goon giving it a Welsh out of 10. I don't know what. It, now, that could be a good thing or it could be a bad thing. I don't know. Yeah, it depends on who you're asking. Here's Sam Skyrider. Jeff Hardy to air you let's go. Hardy Boys versus Lucha Brothers. Yeah. Listen, I don't even care anymore. I'm done with the Hardys with whatever. I don't care. They go this, there, or the other thing. I don't even care. Sam Skywriter, thanks for the four dollars, but I'm just done with that. It's over. Um, Hopefully, they don't put these two back together for a match either. You know, they had the Symphony of Destruction. That's it. Yeah, I mean, but no, no more Megadeth matches. That's that's all we can you know accrue from these two, and it it's not like they did anything bad. And I'm glad at least they escalated to something different. But. Joe, the fact that you get so fucking enraged that someone's donation is really telling of you. Mm. Why do you get so triggered when someone says your opinion is wrong? You mm. throw a fit like a child would. Learn to control yourself, you delusional asshole. I think it's because the donator was wrong. It's not my opinion. It's the it's the guy is wrong. If you don't like my opinion on something, I couldn't give a shit. But he was just straight up wrong. And it was in, between it, facts and opinions. It was infuriating that he was that much of a retard. Like that's what we're triggered about. You know what I mean? But you know, 
What are you going to do, bro? You'll see when Shit the, bomb. You'll see when the ratings keep going down. Hi, Joe. I'm a long-time listener but never donated. I've been having a rough time in my life. Truth is I'm a fat piece of shit and can't get more than $600 a day to stream Call of Duty. Jesus. I need $900 a day, Joe. Can you or your subs help? Please, I'm a... Oh, um... No. <laughs> uh, Re Wings of Redemption, thank you, brother. I mean, listen... I used to watch Wings back in 2009. That's not... Is, is, that a, is that a joke? Is that is that guy like a weird streamer or something? He's the uh, the heavy set gentleman that played Call of Duty and, and has the wonderful rages. He broke many, many, many a controller, 360 and PlayStation oh, right. controller. So they were just that was a troll on him, I guess. Huh? Oh, ab absolutely. But I remember he used to be big in the Call of Duty scene, and then his mouth got him in a lot of trouble. So oh, really? What did he What did he do? He raged on another streamer after losing in a one v one, and was his his what a pussy. Yeah, his non-sportsmanlike attitude started the downward trend of his career, and then he just lied a lot, and oh. there's been a whole storied saga from there. Kind of like that big, fat piece of shit from uh, Magic the Gathering who started a GoFundMe who uh, just criticizes everybody and calls people out for stuff and says he needs a safe space, and then... Um, he basically doesn't make videos anymore, really. He just collects like fifty thousand dollars a month on Patreon, and does nothing. And he call and he goes after anybody who's just like a, was a right wing person, and uh, just uses people for their money and doesn't make content anymore. Kind of like that guy, I guess. Yeah. God, I hate that guy. What was that guy's name? Anybody remember his name? Fucking hate that guy. Something like. It'll come to me. Fucking like a Lotus Leaf or somebody like I don't know. Whatever the fuck. I don't know. The guy's a piece of shit. Um, anyway, Jeremy from the quartering kicked his ass and now his penis is up his own asshole. So fuck him. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Here we go. I'm about to get it, man. Here we go. Here we go. About to get it, man. Here we Red go. Comet man. Here he go. dropped the bomb the other day. Oh, no. Thanks, Red Comet. Damn, Joe. I usually at work now and I don't watch Raw, but that you just did was real the act. But that you just did was real the act. I don't know what that means. I'm not sure if he's saying was that an act or, or that was an act. I think he said that was the real act. Oh, that was or the real act. What a I did. Act. Yeah, well, something, whatever I did was realer than raw. I'll tell you that. No doubt about it. Listen, I've been saying this for six years or longer, and and it's like, and I and at first we started saying this could start happening, and then it did, and I've already explained a million times over why the ratings do matter. So I don't want to do it again, but if I have to, I will. People go, oh, it's the internet now. People watch YouTube and the other things, and that's why the ratings are down everywhere. <laughs> no, they're not. Ratings on other shows go up or stay steady. Yeah. Raw ratings are way down. So, and they continue to decline week after week after week after month after right. year. There's so. a downward trend. They don't go back. They go up, down, up, down, but they trend down. Up, up a little, down more, up more, down more, up a little, and ratings down is what more. helps them earn these lucrative television deals that's why they got a billion dollars from fox for smackdown because right. at that point in time they were doing well and the thought was if we take a product doing around a 2.4 or 5 on a cable tv channel and bring that to a a you know non-cable channel a network channel that more people get in their homes because it's free access <laughs> we can go ahead and double that and for the first week or second week they got over a four the first week and they were like oh my god this is great Second week was like a 3.8 or 9, somewhere around there, and then it just dropped. Right, <laughs> right. Now they can barely get a 2. I'll show you in one second. I'll show you. Want to see? I'll show you right now. You're going to see You're going to see it. You're going to be like, oh, wow. That's what it means. I'm going to put it visually so you can see it. So just take me one second. No worries at all. I'm almost there. Uh, I did have a few people point out on Twitter, too, um, that at least we haven't had any of the usual holiday matches. We didn't have anything for Thanksgiving. No, you know, pilgrim street fight right. kind of, you know, with, with pumpkin pie thrown everywhere. And we didn't have anybody, you know, having pumpkins thrown on their heads for Halloween, stuff like that. So if they do have like this Symphony of Destruction match, I'm OK with it. Plus, it escalated their feud. It's, as much as it's a silly and pointless feud, at least if they are going to keep having them have matches, it's not just a singles match every week. They had them do something different, so I'm giving them a positive praise for that much. Yeah, 
and it, and it was relevant to their feud with you know Jeff attacking Elias with the guitar. So having a symphony of destruction match with all the weapons makes sense, you know, to have them be instruments. Right. I mean, I didn't mind that, you know, like I I really didn't. It's just that. Uh, it's just that, like, I, it's a not, it's like that was one of the better things of the night almost. Like, that's fucking crazy. That that was one yeah. of the better things of the night. It really was. I can't think of a match that was more entertaining. Certainly wasn't Ricochet and Slapjack or anything the women put out tonight. Mm hmm. Yeah. Sadly. Yeah. I know the women are leading to a tag title match, so it'll be Asuka and Lana taking on Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler at TLC. And what do you think it's going to be? <gasps> a tables match. And what do you think is going to happen? Lana's going to put Nia Jax through a table, especially since Lana got the pin over Baszler today, which was the most ridiculous-looking thing as well. Awful match there. That was the third match, so we skip ahead a little bit here. But the backstage promos were nauseating. Lana is trying to sound confident but she just seems, I, I don't even know, I, I, I just fake. She seems like That's a special needs Olympian. That's better than I could have ever described. She sounds like a, like a, like a person who won, who like, do you remember back in the day, like who got on a show that wasn't supposed to be on a show or like, you know, like the average person from like, I don't know, man, she just doesn't, like she's annoying. Like, first of all, she's annoying. She doesn't fit. It doesn't work at all. She just comes off stupid and annoying, and she just feels like she's like part of a. She won a contest to be on Raw as an actress. That's what she seems like, like a fan who won a contest to be on Raw as an actress or as a wrestler. Like it just doesn't make yeah, any like sense. Yeah, like a diva search. Absolutely right. I, I, exactly. I entirely there. It feels like, like I said, just incredibly fake. And then, you know, uh, we, we, we get further into this, and, and Naya's a uh, uh, botching, bumping maniac looking just horrible. So oh, my God. Before, you know, Naya Botch Club is scream. Botch Club's going to make a highlight reel out of this entire match. I haven't even looked on Instagram yet, but Botch oh, Club. Oh, I'm sure they've got so much content from this, it's ridiculous. Is that me? Is that my phone beeping? No, that's me going off, even though I thought no. it was on silent. I apologize. I thought it was mine. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> but yeah, I mean, we we know it's going to head to a tables match. That's that's the unfortunate part here. And then we're going to get the belts that I want off of Nia and, and Shayna, but not on Asuka and Lana. Asuka's already a champion. Having this this obsession with the two belt people is terrible. You know, you're you're giving less people a chance to actually earn something in the women's division. Mm. It, it just all of it is is baffling how they decide to to orchestrate and book these things. <laughs> now now your women's title on Raw is being ignored for this pointless, stupid feud. You could have put Nia together, or excuse me, Lana together with anybody else and made it work, but instead this is what we're getting. It, it's it's ridiculous. Speaking of ridiculous, let's go to my uh, Twitter poll and uh, check it out here. Not looking good. If you guys want to follow me on Twitter, I could always use all of you to follow me on Twitter so that when we get in a fight, with some SJW piece of garbage scumbag that all of you guys can come with me on Twitter and fight these pieces of garbage shit. So follow me on Twitter at JCS Commentary right now. You're not gonna miss you're not gonna want to miss my tweets when I friggin' goddamn disarm and dis Oh my god, I just saw Nia Jax diving through the ropes again. Oh my god. What Lana slide tackles onto the ground and then holds the rope down for Nia Jax to just run through the rope like a retarded rhinoceros. I want to end myself. This show, this show makes me want to force feed carcinogens down my throat until throat cancer slowly takes my life in front of my family. <laughs> Jesus. I mean, what in the fuck are you doing? 
91% of you said you did not enjoy Raw tonight. By the way, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm predicting a 1.69. This is going to be a 1.69 crash and burn rating. So get ready. Top 10 worst rating of the year. Somewhere probably even lower than that. Higher, rather. But got to be got to be the somewhere in the top 10 lowest rated Raw of, of the year, probably. Maybe, I you know, unless people stuck around to see the train wreck, I don't know. I doubt it, highly. L Nia Jax is on the other side of the ring. Nobody is on the ground. Nia Jax looks at the ground and at the ropes as if she's supposed to run to them. The one thing you could say is that maybe she was going to run off the ropes to attack Asuka, who's behind her. But then, instead of doing that, she goes through the ropes willingly. And it makes no sense. And this has got to be one of the worst things I've ever seen. Lana obviously was maybe out of position or something and then comes and dives in too early. I don't know. Obviously, Nia should have been running. Lana should have dove later. Who knows with, with Nia Jax? Nia Jax could have been completely stupid yeah. and just not started running. And then Lana was like, oh, shit, she's not going to run unless I start showing like I'm ready to go. Or Nia was ready to run, but Lana wasn't even close. So Nia was waiting. It looked like Lana was eight. Uh, you know, like like she was counting and like she was actually late to go into where she was supposed to yeah. be for that spot. So I think it was more on Lana to start <sighs> the kerfuffle <laughs> and then the fuck up just you know snowballed from there do you know how you fix that by the way as a wrestler how so you realize that it's too late and you're out of position do you know what you do you run over to the ropes you run over to the spot you're supposed to be at and you stare down naya because she's about to run so you run over to the spot you're supposed to be at but instead of diving on the ground and just giving yourself up and making no sense by doing it and then holding a rope down expecting a wrestler to just now run and look like a fucking idiot. You made Nia Jax look like a fucking idiot, which isn't hard to do because she constantly makes herself look like a fucking idiot. But Lana, you look like a fucking idiot for doing this. Next time, you run over and you don't slide on the ground for no reason and hold the ropes down and make it look stupid. You run over to the ropes, you turn at Nia, and you go, come on, come and get me, come and get it. And then as she runs, you then drop down, pull the rope down. You do the same spot, and the other person should know what you're doing. Okay, she fucked up. All right, I'm, I'm, we'll make it happen anyway. And nobody will know! I went to wrestling school! <laughs> And I well, knew Nia this before didn't. that. I knew this before that. These people suck a dick. Because she did. She just stopped and waited. I don't know if she like didn't trust Lana or because Lana was there, but she was already holding the rope, making her look like more of an idiot. So, like I said, it looked like Lana was late at first, and then Naya kind of just didn't trust in the spot because she stopped dead in her tracks and just waited. Yeah. Then all of a sudden, she starts running again and blaze herself through the ropes just falls through and it just looked horrible oh i mean so embarrassing uh, on the fly dude see on the fly dude you don't what is this mentality i've seen other people do this of like we must do the exact spot no you don't have to do that if you've already fucked it up you don't need to absolutely make that happen there's another way to get the same result naya's supposed to be out of the ring fine you fucked it up. Go over and go, come and get me, come and get me. And then and then and then as Nia runs at her, you're actually directing her with people not even knowing that. You're actually directing the call. You're calling it on the fly and nobody knows it, but you know what you're doing. Because you knew you were supposed to wait and then be on the ground there and pull down the rope. And you weren't there. So then you make yourself there and then you tell your opponent basically what you want to do. And then they go, oh, I get it. I'm running at you. And then they go out of the ring. Nobody at home knows. But you know who does know? Everybody now. Because that doesn't make any fucking sense. And you just made the business look like shit. You just made the business look fucking embarrassing and stupid. As if it couldn't look any stupider now. You're both embarrassing. Nia Jax is going to fucking kill someone in the ring. I almost hope it happens. I almost hope Nia Jax kills someone in the ring. 
and Lana doesn't know what the fuck she's doing, she's going to fucking just make the business look shittier every second. I want to see Nia Jax. Nia's going to hurt somebody. I hope Nia Jax and Lana get in a real fight in the fucking goddamn parking lot later tonight and a fucking cab driver runs them into a wall. All right? (laughs) What the fuck? You're fucking sucking this business. There's no reset in the script, so they don't know how to reset anything. And it is the truth. So many people have said it. We've said it before. There's no ability to improv. They don't know how to call things on the fly. They don't know how to fix things. So when a spot is missed... They just panic, and instead of making it look good, they just continue. You know, there's 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 only so much that uh, training can get you. You need that in-ring experience just to have that second nature. These are things that you develop over time, not just with training, but practice as well. That's what happens. You know, we saw Kenny Omega make a botch. I believe it was at the last pay-per-view, but instead of, you know, making it more noticeable, he stays on the mat and sells his knee injury and follows through with that. Instead of, you know, making it look bad, like, oh, I missed the spot. Let me just immediately do it again. No, he adds some psychology there to it. Let me go ahead. Let me sell. Let me take my time. We don't see that from hardly any of the women's division on WWE's raw side of things. I want an angry mob of people to pitchfork me to death. Like, I want to get in a time machine. I want to get in a time machine and go back to Salem, Massachusetts as a female, and I want somebody to claim I'm a witch and then I want the entire fucking town to storm my little fucking home and I want them to stab me in the eye in the head, in the heart in the throat, in the legs in the dick, in the fucking back, in the shins, in the kneecaps in the sphincter, in the grundle in the ball sack, in the throat in the mouth, in the tongue, in the nose in the ears, in the goddamn fucking shins in the fucking ankles I want my heart harpooned, I want my lungs to collapse, and I want to be murdered with pitchforks and never have to see another Monday night woo raw again. What else we got on raw? Oh, God. <laughs> to- Total Bellas need- is more exciting than raw. Total Bellas. What the fuck the point is, Vince? What the fuck the point is? Oh. Yo, yo, my guys. Yo. Tag team champions. All I ask is you play quick now, my newest creation. Vince McMahon and the Rolling Stones collaboration never before seen. I will donate again if not played. Ha 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 ha. <laughs> Let's go. Just hit it. Let's go check it out. Let's see if we can get a copyright. <laughs> Here we go. I hope people are uh, time stamping these fucking rants, by the way. Because they're all valid and they're all going to be fucking, <laughs> they're all going to be played. Uh, Botch Club, thank you. Botch Congrats Club. on 83,000. That's crazy on TikTok. Shit. That is crazy. That's oh, nuts. Oh, well, here it is. That you can't always get what you want. Honey, you can't <laughs> always get what you want. You can't always get. <laughs> What you want? But if you try sometime, <laughs> well, you might just find that you might you need. Ah, yeah. And I said <laughs> that. Ch- Guys, go follow uh, Botch Club. Always oh, pumping out the hilarious content. Oh yeah. Uh, we passed over Ricochet and Slapjack. With Mustafa Ali, Slapjack ends up beating Ricochet. Three-minute match here. I think 3.30 really? and all. Nothing uh, worth I'll be right back, Jake. Leah's telling, here. Me there's, yeah. Leah's telling me there's water coming down the chimney. I'll be right back. Oh, no. Yeah, so you know, got to get that fixed before Santa comes. Uh, Ricochet, you know, they, they end up fighting. Uh, we get a standing shooting star press for a near fall early on by Ricochet. And then that's when Ali ends up calling for help. So Mason T-Bar come out and Ricochet, you know, tosses Slapjack out uh, to both of them at ringside. And then he does a huge flip onto everybody. The trio falls. Ricochet gets Slapjack back in the ring. And that's when Dana Brooke shows up and slaps Ali across the face and says, where's your girl? You know, talking about Mia Yim slash Reckoning however you want to call her, which we'll get to that later because that was a disaster. And, you know, Ricochet fights off the rest of uh, Retribution here. 
and he ends up getting, you know, distracted when he drops to the floor and Slapjack performs a huge twisting suplex and Ricochet goes ahead and gets pinned one, two, three. So really short match here. Again, the outside interference makes Slapjack look weak. I don't know what they're trying to prove, but having you get help to beat Ricochet doesn't do anything to put anyone over. Then we had a little backstage tit for tat with Miz and Morrison and Sheamus. Basically, they were trying to get Sheamus to turn on to Drew McIntyre. This way, the Miz can cash in the money in the bank and he would give Sheamus a shot at the title. So Miz, you know, slammed the briefcase over uh, his back at the end and Sheamus, you know, they, they turned on him with the numbers advantage and attacked him. So. You know, that's that's setting up the story for later in the night to see, well, will he turn on Drew or, you know, is he going to go ahead and help him out? We talked about the awful Nia botch that happened with Baszler. Baszler loses as Lana gets the cover and the three count. Fantastic. Lana just beat Shayna Baszler. That feels like I'm swallowing nails to say that. Uh, You know, it's going to lead to a table match, like we said, at TLC. Then we get Seamus backstage. He's talking to Drew, and you know Seamus is, is saying he's okay, and he grumbles about the Miz beating him up, and says, "This is, you know, I expected them to to do this kind of thing, and no matter what, we're on the same page, and you know they're they're going to worry about their tag match later." So McIntyre just kind of laughed it off. Now we're just kind of wondering, yeah, well, is Seamus going to turn since Drew didn't help him? That's kind of what they're trying to present that little red herring. We get. The New Day, they come out, cut a promo. Kofi's talking about how uh, Xavier Woods, a.k.a. his real name they had to throw in there, Austin Creed, is the new host of G4, the video game network's coming back. I used to love G4. Watch that all the time. Attack of the Show was my shit back in the day. You know, Kevin and Olivia, I used to love that around the net. X-Play, all of it. So every night I used to watch G4, especially college times. It was great. Uh, so congratulations to, you know, Xavier Woods for that. Uh, it's curious to see if he's going to stay as a, you know, full-time WWE roster member, or is he going to transition into the entertainment world? Got to see what happens. Cause he's pretty intertwined with that, with his YouTube channel. Um, then we go ahead and they, they, you know, call out the hurt business who ends up coming out. And just as they start to cut the promo MVPs, you know, getting to his usual points, And that's when uh, Shelton Benjamin starts to talk as well. And then Cedric Alexander grabs the mic, runs to the ring, and and starts to go ahead and cut this just embarrassing yet again for like the the umpteenth time tonight, it felt like, promo. It was uh, just ridiculous. It made the Hurt Business look bad, which isn't hard to begin with. But again, the fact that Bobby Lashley wasn't there either is a bit troubling, but We'll see. Uh, we go ahead, and they did make mention of, of what happened last week with MVP later on, costing you know him the match. But it would be nice if they did pay a bit more attention to that storyline, since it's pretty prevalent as to will the group be able to stay together. So here we get Cedric Alexander beating Xavier Woods. This is Xavier's first singles match in, in well over a year. They made sure to note that as well. Not a great match, honestly. Felt like a waste. Uh, Cedric, you know, hits the lumbar check and scores the pin at the end. So, yay. Uh, Again, nothing compelling going on here. I don't care for the story that they're telling. This feels drawn out and worn out already, especially because we saw the Hurt Business for so long try and go for the Raw Tag titles with the Street Profits. They wanted them. Then they had, you know, small feuds with a few other people. Then we get into them versus Retribution, which just fell to the wayside. Nothing really came of it. And now they're feuding with the New Day, and already it feels stale and, you know, old. Yeah, I agree with Vince McJoke. It it does feel like Xavier already has one foot out the door. So I I can see him cashing out sooner than later. Then we have, as Joe brought up earlier, Matt Riddle's terrible, god-awful promo here. He's, you know, calling, uh, you know, his nicknames yet again. We've got Chipper coming out and, and, oh, you know, he he talks about his bunny rabbit. The the whole thing uh, just made me feel like I said before, I'm losing brain cells. I I don't know why they make Riddle look like such just a loser and a total buffoon and a moron. 
There's nothing comedic about this. It wasn't funny. It was just insulting. It was painful to sit through and it made everyone look bad. They accomplished nothing with this. And then on top of it, AJ has this huge bodyguard almost that's supposed to be, you know, this deciding factor. But I, I really don't feel like he plays the part that he's supposed to. I, I know that they're trying to do a few things and you don't want to see him being, uh, you know, the, the big, uh, you know, factor in every match. But Keith Lee shoves him, you know, while he's dominating everybody. And then he, he shoves Styles into, you know, the big bodyguard. And then he goes ahead and he puts Styles up on the apron. And, you know, that, that was kind of it you got from it. You know, they had to do a commercial. It's like, so no retaliation, no, no nothing there. I, I don't know. It, it just, uh, it, it feels a, a bit lackluster and insulting. So all in all, this match, it doesn't matter that AJ Styles is going to TLC for a WWE championship match because we know he's not going to beat Drew. It, it it didn't even feel like a real number one contenders match. Keith Lee doesn't feel like he deserves to be in the title picture, and Riddle certainly doesn't either. AJ's been a bona fide champion and a proven star, but unfortunately his stock has plummeted because he has not been able to be treated like the stellar champion he is. They've pushed him to the wayside. They could have done more with him being the captain of the men's team and really, you know, delve into that. But instead they, they made it into a joke angle. They didn't make everyone respect him and fear AJ in a sense of like, even though I'm more intimidating and I'm a bigger size, you have to go ahead and, and you know, I'm, I'm going to bow down to AJ. Why? Then AJ kicks their ass in the ring, and now they're like, yeah, all right, you are the, the lead man. You are the team captain. That's where they should have went with AJ. Built him up to show that he's just enough of a superior athlete above each of one of the other five members that he could really go ahead and feel like a ready-made champion. It would work. Unfortunately, that's not what we get here. Uh, so now we have a, you know, our, our title match set for the pay-per-view and it feels like a waste. Although with TLC matches, we've seen some, you know, screwy finishes and things like that have happened before. You know, we've seen Sheamus beat John Cena for the WWE championship years ago through in a tables match at TLC. Things like this do happen with these type of stipulations, but with Drew Jess getting the title back, uh, you want a week ago, I don't foresee them having him drop it again. So this will be a quick feud that gets us out of December and into rumble season to get ready for mania. Unfortunately, AJ is going to lose and we're going to move on. Then we go ahead and we see uh, Miz and Morrison still trying to hatch a plan, you know, and, and how they're, you know, basically going to go ahead and do all they can to, uh, make sure that McIntyre is no longer the champion by the time this night is over. And they, you know, they, they, she says, Oh, you're just listing off a bunch of facts. You're not really having, you know, hatching a plan here. And they, they get disgruntled and leave the interview. So pointless backstage, nothingness here and more just dribble coming out of everybody's mouth. Then we get to one of my favorite botches of the night. Reckoning comes out and is taking on Dana Brooke. Dana Brooke was attacked by Reckoning a few weeks ago and took her out of the Survivor Series match since, uh, you know, Mandy was actually injured, Dana's partner. They start this match, and, you know, Reckoning's already in the ring, and here we go. Oh, wait, her mask fell off instantly. As soon as it's, it's seconds in, we're, we're, <laughs> we barely heard the bell ring, and already her mask has fallen off. And everyone is shocked to to see that oh my god it's not reckoning it's really me a yim so we were all completely surprised and taken aback by that surprise but it matches awful absolutely awful i'm sorry but me a yim deserves better here i'm hoping that since she oh, i hate to say it lost here to dana brooke in a in a really sloppy roll-up horrible 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 finish to this match Mustafa Ali comes in and he's yelling at her about how you embarrassed me and there's no failure in retribution, which is a lie though, because retribution has failed even with, you know, Mustafa Ali being there so many times they've failed so many times. It's absolutely a ridiculous concept for him to say that failure is not an option when that's been your only option for weeks. I think last week and this week are the first two matches you guys have successfully won. You lost your debut match, so I don't want to hear it. That failure is not an option. 
but they go ahead and, and you know is this them kicking her out of the group it seems that way and i certainly hope so maybe the mask thing was a botch and not intended to happen and they just ran with it but they can use that for a story hey your mask fell off we can't have you that made me die laughing i was cracking up at her you know having to try and fix it and just giving up on it but quick and from there we go ahead and, and hopefully she's done with this and they can move her into the women's division and give us an actual feud with asuka that would be great them two would put on a stellar match i'm sure because right now we have on the after show uh, gorilla strong showed me on twitter we have lana dancing dancing with asuka as you know lana's chanting uh you know asuka is the best lana's number one over and over that's that's what we want for the women's tag team titles oh i miss bailey and sasha being the champs and i never thought i'd say that uh, then we get Miz and Morrison again, and now they're with AJ Styles, and they're saying that, you know, that we could be the real triple threat, and we can go ahead here, and, and uh, you know, we, we could work together, and we brought you a victory pie, and it's, it's you know, a peach, because you're from Georgia, trying to really uh, sway his opinion of them. AJ says, yep, I'll help you guys. It's a lot easier to beat you, Miz, at TLC than it is to beat Drew. And that's when they gave him the pie, walked away and, and almost said something stupid. Like that's no pie. It's cupcakes. They're trying to make him a, a comedian now, but it was the most ridiculous drivel that I've heard him speak yet. Uh, why are they ruining this guy? He's, he's massive. He's, he's huge. He's damn gigantic. He was intimidating when he was part of the raw underground security team. Now he just looks like an idiot. How do they manage to turn everyone into an idiot? It's it's just so uh, so upsetting. Uh, let's see, uh, let's see here. I'm looking through the, <laughs> looking through the chat. Jacob said, "Medium's mask falling off was Retribution Shockmaster moment." Yeah, it kind of felt that way. Teardrop says Retribution is the worst faction in wrestling uh, history. I don't I don't know if we can go that far. I'm sure we can think of others that have been worse if we really sit here, but. Uh, Derek Johnson said the whole show needs to be condensed to one hour. Give five minutes for only the best women and fuck off with the rest. It's just three hours of long, painful BS filler. I agree too. You know, why does JJ's right? Why does everything have to be a joke? Have them, you know, it's not, cup, it's not pie. It's cupcake. That's, that's corny. It is silly. I agree, Elijah. Why do they write these, these horrific lines for these people to say? And how can you not stand up for yourself and say, I would never say this as a human being. I would never say this, but as a wrestler and, and as my character, I would, I would actually, I give more credit to the spirit squad, most plays than I do to retribution. So, uh, but you know, here we, here we go. And, and yet again, we hear this so many times. Uh, I just, I don't know how anyone can defend Vince's writing at this point in time or anything with the entire creative division, but currently that's the problem. So, then we get to our main event, and yet again, Drew McIntyre getting paired, you know, paired up with somebody. So now he's with Sheamus because they have a long history, even though we've never really seen this before. And they're taking on the team of Miz and Morrison. They both get their entrances, and they come out. You know, it, it, we see AJ Styles come out, and him and almost go to commentary. Uh, it was an okay back and forth, you know, Seamus starts and eventually he gets, uh, you know, gets worked over a bit and finally goes ahead and tags in McIntyre. Now they start roughing up Morrison. It's just more of the usual, nothing enticing me to, to feel special about any of this. Yeah. Uh, D Walsh brings up a great point. That's why Moxley told Jericho on his podcast that he wanted to tell Vince this garbage is shit. I don't want to say this. And that's when, you know, you heard the whole thing of him saying that's such good shit. What are you talking about? You know, Vince is convinced that what he's writing is, is excellent. So for the main event, Seamus gets, uh, you know, singled out. The numbers advantage happens as, you know, I mentioned before Seamus goes face to face with almost and, and then he gets hit by Morrison. So almost doesn't get involved. There's no retribution for AJ getting shoved into him. There, there, there's there's just nothing all night for any of this. And we go ahead, we go right into a commercial break. And again, they continue with that trend that I can't stand. They've done it so many times week in and week out. They're so afraid that people are going to change the channel that they go ahead and they give you these false promises. If they're going to come back and continue what they're promising, I'd be fine with it. 
But here's the big issue. We see them. Oh, the feed's coming out. Retribution's coming out. And, you know, Drew's coming out. Oh, almost is getting involved. He's going to go and he's going to hit somebody. He's going to hit Seamus right after this commercial break. And then we come back from commercial and it's like it never happened. As soon as we come back, Seamus is being beat up by Morrison. And then he gets a, you know, he finally gets McIntyre in there. We get, uh, I don't, I don't want to call it a hot tag, but it's warm. And from there, you know, it sets up for the finish. So who, who gives a shit? Styles goes ahead. He hits McIntyre with a phenomenal forearm, lays him out for the DQ. And Miz and Morrison look like complete idiots here. They, they don't, you know, they hit their finishers on McIntyre. And by the time they go and, and actually get to the briefcase, McIntyre's up, recovers, and is hitting people with claymores. So their inability to cash in even makes them look more silly and, and uh, incompetent, really. So McIntyre gets up and, and says something about bitch and the beanstalk, which was funny, talking about Omos and AJ. And he paid attention to them, but he kind of just... You know, he was he was busy, you know, smirking and, and giving AJ the attention as Miz, who's the, you know, the real threat with the money in the bank briefcase, I would think is, is just beaten and overlooked. So why, you know, why would I want to go and, and watch TLC after seeing this? Why would I be interested in any of this pay-per-view? I, I genuinely don't know what WWE is thinking or how they feel that this is entertaining enough to make people want to purchase the WWE network or merchandise or to go ahead and, and, you know, purchase the pay-per-view if they don't have the network, any of these options. I mean, really, we, we have nothing that, that stands out for us to look forward to. I'm sure Drew and, and AJ will be a good match, but we know the outcome already. So really, I mean, it takes away three quarters of the interest there. Hopefully they give us something stellar. AJ usually puts on it, you know, his best foot forward and his best effort. Same with Drew, but it's not guaranteed. Uh, you know, in, in most places, right. Indie story wrestling, you know, wrestling storytelling is, is seemingly better than what we've gotten from main roster WWE. Yeah. I mean, they want Drew to look extremely strong. That's part of my point too. So Kevy Schaff makes a great point. Drew no sells three finishers essentially at the end. He, he sells them initially. I don't want to say a full no sell. I wouldn't agree with that entirely, but he does uh, get as close to a no sell as possible. I mean, Miz and Morrison both lay him out, you know, after, and that's after Styles hit him with a phenomenal forearm. So, you know, you, you get them both hitting their finishers, and that, that's his third essentially in a row. And that's when McIntyre is able to recover enough to get the Claymore kicks. I mean, they want to book him like the Terminator. All right, but you're going to have to have your challenger be of equal value or greater. And we're, we're not there at all. AJ feels like he's about to get steamrolled unless almost saves his ass. And even that doesn't seem like enough of a threat that McIntyre can't, you know, overcome it. Really, if you look at Hell in a Cell, it, feel like, it feels like Drew beat himself in a way. The way he went through the table, everything, you know, it was kind of like he kicked his own ass more than Orton did. At least that's how I see it. Sadly, if, if you're trying to look for the positives on this Raw, um, you know, I laughed at Mia Yim's mask falling off, but that's not a positive. I did like the Symphony of Destruction match. I would give that a thumbs up or a positive. You know, it, it wasn't groundbreaking or death-defying. I hope that Obviously, the Swanton Bomb didn't knock Hardy, you know, crazy and didn't make any more screws loose in that noggin of his. Hopefully, he's okay and no concussions, but at least they tried. I like the introduction. I really like Alexa Bliss. Her acting is really good. Sorry that I'm all over the place today. My head has been absolutely killing me, and, uh, you know, as my speech therapist said, connecting words isn't so easy when you can't focus. So, um. Oh no! Yeah, I would probably give this a four, and that's that's very generous. Maybe even closer to a three point five. You know, Bliss's acting was good. I liked the interaction between her and Randy Orton going back and forth. That that saved you know the intro for me and put the the show off on the right foot. I thought that we were going to get something at least a little more compelling than what we got tonight, and I was hoping at least for somewhere around a six. They couldn't even get us to that far. Uh, Joe is currently dealing with some some leaks from this torrential downpour that we've been having. Uh, I'm extremely sensitive to the weather, and the rain has just been brutal the past two days. So between the arthritis and stuff for me, it, it's been a nightmare. And God knows what he's dealing with with his house if he said he's got some leaks. So, But he will be back, and we'll continue playing your donations. 
Thank you all for holding out. I wish I could play them or add people to the call. I can't, but hopefully I'm entertaining you in the meantime. Uh, looking for news. It says current status for gimmick matches at TLC. Uh, the company appeared to approve Roman Reigns versus Kevin Owens for the WWE title. We'll get Sheena Baszler and Nia Jax versus Lana and Asuka for the women's tag team titles, as we said. Daniel Bryan, who we thought was going to go for the title picture against Roman, is now going to be taking on Jay Uso. They want to build up Jay Uso more and have him look like uh, more of a monster. Roman wants people to fear Jay, so that should be interesting uh, to see how that match goes down and how violent they get. And then, of course, we have Randy Orton and The Fiend. Uh, it could be just Bray Wyatt. It could be The Fiend. I, I imagine it'll be The Fiend, but we'll get stipulations for those, obviously, with TLC being the theme of the pay-per-view, but at least we have those four matches. And realistically, uh, I'm looking forward to, to you know three of them so far, and it's all on the SmackDown side of things, mostly. Uh, well, the, I, I scratch that. One Raw match. But we'll see what we get from there. You know, I'm curious to see if they do include the SmackDown tag team titles uh, or if Sami Zayn comes back and gets another chance to kind of go ahead and set himself up. TLC is I'm December back, I'm 20th. back, I'm back, I'm sorry. Don't be sorry. We Deals, got a red uh, alert. TLC is December 20th. Whew. Got a red alert in my house here. So you remember how I had the leaks, the issues a year ago when we found out? Yes. Yeah, I remember. So we fix the porch or whatever, and it's still leaking. So what I, what I can tell is happening is even though they, they rebuilt the whole porch, it's still leaking because in between the doors, there's a crack, and the water's just going in down between those areas. So I can figure it out. Not a big deal, but it's leaking in the laundry room. The other problem is, is obviously I put this up with the thing and whatever, and I have this accessible to take a look. And... uh it's leaking a little bit, but I know why, because it's also leaking in the chimney upstairs. So the, chi the the water is coming in through the chimney. So water's coming in through the chimney this way, coming down into the ash dump in the basement, overflowing the ash dump and leaking on the floor. Now I've got a bucket in the chimney to catch the water. Problem is, some of the water is running across the brick in the back of the chimney. So there's nothing I can do to stop that, because it's running against the wall and down and around. But the big drips are getting caught now by the bucket. Um, so, but I can, the water's starting to come out onto the floor like it used to. Uh, now the, the, the hurricane, not the hurricane, but whatever wind storm we had and the rain is dying down that, so there's two, two different leaks so far, right? Two different leaks. The one in the laundry room, the one in the chimney, the one in the laundry room should be taken care of because I went outside and I put trash bags over the outside doors. That should stop the water from coming in. Then I put the bucket in the chimney. And then I put a towel down in the back area, so hopefully when it comes down, the towel will soak up most of the water before it runs down around into the ash dump. And then the bucket's catching the water. But the third issue is that there's water coming out of my electrical box again. So if you Oh, that's not good. Yeah, if you open up if I open up my electrical box, water is coming out of the out of the switches. So her dad now Leah's dad's an electrician. He came by and he fixed it, so called, by um he drilled holes in the bottom of the meter so it would leak out so it wouldn't get built up in the meter. But there's a hole in the wire outside. So if the wind is blowing and raining, the water is going into the wire and then running down the wire into the meter. So he drilled holes in it. But I think the water was so crazy. We had a big hurricane-like thing today. It wasn't hurricane, but it was like 60-mile-an-hour, 80-mile-an-hour wind gusts and just pouring rain all day long, right? It rained all day long. So I'm watching not heavily amounts of water, in fact, but I had to move the modem away from the electrical board because water was dripping from the electrical board uh, on top of the modem. <laughs> so now I'm wearing rubber shoes. Um, so, yeah, that's what I just did. So I'm sorry that I wasn't here. All right. Um, but I did rebuild the floor, too, so that I silicone the floor in a way that the water should be you know it would take at least over a quarter of an inch of water it would take over a couple of you know it would take like more than this of water to get over the silicone and i can see where it is working and it's redirecting the water into the corner here where i put a towel so now all the stuff of the towel but it's definitely not as bad as it used to be and whatever and i've definitely figured out what the issues are anyway moss blaze what up moss blaze how you doing man how you guys doing? Let me, um, anyway, Jake, I'm sorry, man. We're, I'm pretty much going to 
try to go get this all figured out. Um, yeah, no, don't apologize. That sucks. You don't want to risk water getting into any of the electronics, you know? Yeah, I got yeah, scary. I, I got to go look around and see what's turned on, see what's plugged in, see what's near the floor. I didn't expect it to leak because it wasn't leaking earlier today. So I was like, oh, man, I guess we fixed everything. And, you know, I think it has been pretty much fixed, but there's obviously it's not. So but now I know all the issues. This is I'm happy about the fact that I know that despite spending the money on the porch, <laughs> it's still leaking because there's a crack under the door and that I know where the chimney is leaking from and also that we need to get the electrician to get up there and fix the damn wire because with a hole in the wire on the side of it, water's blowing into it and coming down still. So there's three things that need to be addressed. Flex seal silicone under the doors. We need the chimney people to come out and cap the chimney or seal it up or whatever they got to do. And we need an electrician to come out and put a new wire up or at least secure the wire. So, yay. Bunch of shit that has to be done. <laughs> Sandman said you had more leaks than Meltzer. <laughs> yeah, right? I So anyway, I just got, uh, discovered all this. It's like being playing detective. Yeah, no but, kidding. But what was happening before, before a year ago, what two a year and a half ago when we first moved into two years ago, is I'd be yeah, about that. I'd be sitting here, and all of a sudden my feet would feel wet, and I'd be like, my feet are soaked. Why are my feet soaked? And like, did you piss yourself again? And yeah. Like, no. And I'm, and what was going on was it was it was the trifecta. It was the porch was leaking, like crazy because it was really bad then. The the chimney is leaking. And the electrical box was leaking, and it was all f coming into a puddle and forming and going into the carpet. And I, and that's why I ripped this whole place up and redid what I did. And I also set this up so that beyond this drywall, I can undo the drywall, and this also flips up and it's still open because I knew this was going to happen where I was going to need to investigate again. So, yay, we figured it out a little bit. Just the problem is the money it's going to cost to fix it probably. More leaks than Shotzi. <laughs> All right, let me play some donos to catch up real quick because I'm gonna I am gonna go deal with this. There's a, I have a big problem going on. Give me the hell yeah! I hope fucking Nia and Lana screw up so bad sometime they break the annex and are paralyzed. Oh Jesus! Oh, no. Worse, fucking That's... Lana Pinchana. Fucking kill me! Why the fuck can't Black and Ricochet others go back NXT? It only makes NXT better versus. Yeah. I mean, I do agree with why can't they just go back to NXT? I don't, I don't like the first part. <laughs> no, no, but that would that would amp up NXT's you know roster as well. Mm -hmm. I don't see why they denied Ooh, him to come a back. A little bit of the bubbly. That's it. Right. That's Want it. some bubbly? Look at this stuff. Oh, oh, a little bit of the bubbly. That's it. Lamar at her rant. So savage. I agree. Most of it consistently sucks. I actually like what Roman is doing, but that's not even raw. Not much else in WWE makes you feel anything. Has Jake ever snapped? The contrast of him coming in. <laughs> the contrast <laughs> yeah. of him com calm. Yeah, yeah, it's funny. Well, it's perfect, Diverse. He snapped a little bit before, but. Oh, I've, I've blown up. I think it was one of the Saudi shows killed me. The water is starting to penetrate my daughter's artwork on the ground. Kane and I'm donating. <laughs> Raw ratings keep going down. What do you even expect anymore? As long as Vince has control, nothing will change and continue to go down. Well, I agree, Sam Skyrider. I mean, that seems to be what we see every week. Damn straight, Sam. Nailed it. Thank you, Sam Skyrider, man. Thank you for the 666 donation, man. I'm sorry that I'm a bit distracted. I'm just like, I'm basically looking around me, like wondering when the water is going to get to me. It's it's like, it's not enough water to flood flood. It's just enough water to be like, I don't want to be stepping in water with electrical, you know? Well, just enough to start causing mold and damage. And I mean, it's not enough, but it's just enough to piss you off. Oh, a little bit of the bubbly. That's it. That's Want it. some bubbly? Look at this stuff. Oh, oh, a little bit of the bubbly. That's it. I'm so sick of seeing that huge no talent bitch on my TV. Is she gonna have killed someone for them to realize she's unsafe and sucks? Lacey Evans and Peyton Royce are kind of entertained on social media get no TV time. This bitch is on every damn week. Right. I don't 
I mean, you, I wonder how much of it Easy E is that you know, oh, people hate her. It's great, you know, whatever. But I just don't. I don't think it's good. You don't think it's good. Super yes, they think it's good. I don't know. Party. Someone tell Joe the show was good. I want to see him go off. Lana versus table is long term <laughs> booking. Vert definitely booked. Well, I mean, I already did it once. You know, I, I don't think I can go crazy a second time. You know. Did you see Mia Yim's mask fall off? Reckoning? Excuse no, me? it's always falling off though. She's always having to adjust her mask. Spaz well, Phoenix, this was thank seconds you. into the match. As soon as she's right after the bell rang, Joe, they didn't even really start, and her mask starts to fall off. Then it's just like, forget it. It's all the way off. So she wrestled without it. So I wonder That's if they kind of ad libbed a bit at that at the end with him yelling at her. You know, oh, you know, retribution isn't about failure. All you guys do is fail. You've won two matches in two weeks, and that's it. And right. that was with sheer luck. All you've done is fail since you've, you know, debuted. Morons. But so hopefully she's out of that group and onto her own thing. Now. Shit hopefully bum. Out of that. Right. Raw was a piece of shit. Anyone who said this was a good show can go to hell. Fuck this show. Fuck Vince McMahon. Mm -hmm. Just fucking go away and die already, you old fucking prune shit. Oh my I'm god. I'm gonna kill Jesus. myself. Fuck this shit and fuck this world. God. I'm gonna kill myself. <laughs> I suck dick for crack. Thank you, I suck dick for crack. Appreciate it. Great name. I like that one, yeah. And then uh, AEW lost by 2,000 viewers last week. Yeah. NXT won 712 to 710. That's crazy. And Jericho says, it's all about the demo, baby. We win again. You know, so. <laughs> this is what it's oh! like. Oh, Too shit. much Monday night. Oh, what the hell am I staring at? Oh, man. The fuck? Oh, it's me. You're killing me Vince McMahon This wrestling Give me a disease Oh Monday Night Raw Sucks Oh Smackdown Live Also sucks And oh If they call someone Up from NXT I know they're gonna Get really bad Quickly Oh I wanna die Wrestling Yeah Yeah. Wow, I gave up watching Raw because AU is good, and even when AU have a weak show, it's still good. Then Raw Joe, you sound awful. You need to take a break on Raw and a different stream. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right now I need to fix all this water that's leaking into my house. This is gonna be a <laughs> it's gonna be a thousand dollar Christmas. Uh, Red Comet man, thanks for the fifteen dollars, man. The water is getting close. <laughs> flooding baby i'll show you where the water's starting to come in red comet man thank you brother i was hoping you were past all that shit after dealing with it last time yeah well it's definitely coming through the chimney that's the so that's the one thing it's coming through the chimney for sure here then over there it's coming through the porch and now it's coming out of the electrical box again so i've got the three issues that i've always had but i've definitely pinpointed what's exactly going on now so that's the good thing the good go thing is I know exactly what's going on. Go the bad thing is the answer was it was everything. Oh, 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 no. <laughs> and the ash dump is filled with water. I got back to the 9,697 Monday Night Raw days. AU will eventually catch up in the number but will always be second in the minds of big business. Uh, you're probably right, Yusuf uh, Bishop. Yusuf Bishop, thank you, man. Hey, you have the same name as me, kind of. Oh, fuck, I just dropped my... Uh... I dropped my flashlight, Yusuf. Um, <laughs> Don't lose you, your flashlight. Yeah, Did you hear the right. news over the weekend as well that China was actually, her manager says this, but it was said that she was offered a WWE championship reign back in the day, so it would have yeah. been a WWF champion. Yeah, the real champion, but, yeah. But Vince went ahead and said there was a catch. He didn't want her to do Playboy. What else we he got? said if, if oh, you choose Playboy over the belt, the bubbly. you the belt, obviously. Want some bubbly? Look at this wow. stuff. Oh, oh, a little bit of the bubbly. That's it. Would rather her dirto knows than raw. Right. Too stuck in my head. Turkeys and Roman. Ever been in shower or walk in dog or in elevator and they come to you? <laughs> give me that Superman punch. I will give Long it to you. Imagine a kid sings for school talent show and you get a call. <laughs> give me that Superman punch in my rectum. That'd be really good, man. All Look. Thanksgiving Day I walked around. What if, what if? You know, yeah, just I was singing turkey stuck songs. Stuck in your head. 
Listen, um, but I am going to get out of here, guys, because I got to go figure this out. I got I still got to figure this out. I got to move electrical stuff. I want to turn off the basement while I try to seal up the water so I don't get electrocuted. It's really not that big a deal. You know, the, only, the only reason why it's any big a deal is because I have so much electrical equipment in here. Like the one area with my stuff is this, like none of the rest of the, none of the basement leaks. Only this little spot over here does. And I'm in it with all my shit. Yeah. So, that just happens to be where all your stuff is. That's the problem. Yeah. So we got to go fix that. And, and I don't uh, think China is a dumbass for taking Playboy over no. the title. Party. I think she did the right move. Jericho well, leaning on the demo is like a guy in a basement that's like, oh, I don't have a real girlfriend, but I've got this jar of mayo that feels like my mother took her dentures out, so I'm still winning. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, it's very Trumpian of uh, Jericho, but he's kind of right about the demo. So, you know, I don't know. What are you going to do? And the guess? demo was the closest they've been to in, in quite some time. So, yeah. So it, it was just the point of it seemed rather than be like, oh, good for them because it was only by 2000. He's always got to find a way to. But see. I feel like people would have remembered China more as the WWF world champion. I almost think she should have done the belt over Playboy. She wouldn't have made the money, though. She said, fuck the belt. I'm doing Playboy. It's the highest selling out of box Playboy, the highest first week Playboy in the history of Playboy. She sold more than Kim Kardashian, and it's number three of all time behind Marilyn Monroe and Kardashian for that. So Kardashian sold more, I guess, overall, but she sold more her first week. But she has all these different, you know, accolades for Playboy. Well, that's hard to argue, I guess. I mean, I remember it was a big deal. I remember that, but it was a huge deal. It was number three of all time behind Kim Kardashian and Marilyn Monroe. Hmm. That's huge. So Yeah, that's pretty crazy. That's pretty crazy. <laughs> she should have gotten the belt, then been like, oh, now I'm doing Playboy. <laughs> Right? She lied to Vince and went into business for herself. She said, let me leave the company and then I'll do it. Um, but they, they pushed that Playboy hard for her. Pun intended. Oh, yeah. Oh, I was hard for it. I was, you know, it was, you know what ended up being better, though, was the goddamn Xbox porn. So who cares anyway? Hey, listen, guys. Thanks for bearing with us tonight. I flipped out a couple times, which was fun. And now I got to go fix my leaky basement and figure this out. Uh, but luckily, it looks like the storm's kind of over. So that's good. Um, thanks to Jake for covering for like 20 minutes while I went around and tried to figure out what the fuck was going on. Yeah, and, baby, uh, you know it. Love you guys, and I'm out of here abruptly. Check out Patreon if you want to help me pay for my basement. Patreon.com slash Joe Cronin Show. So much content. Off the rails went up earlier today, plus corrupted audio. The audio for Corrupted Podcast is up, and a bunch of other shit. It's all there on Patreon. It's coming tomorrow as well. I'll have a little update for you tomorrow in a morning madness. I'll see you then. I may, I may, I may, if I get this basement shit figured out, I may stream uh, Diablo later. I don't know. That's only if I want to stay up and watch the leak. See what happens. Uh, we'll see what happens. I'll see what happens. You'll see what happens. Good night. See you tomorrow. Check out Spaz Phoenix podcast. He's going to be live talking about the AEW stuff. And then I'll be live with Throwdown. And then Wednesday night, we'll be live with the AEW review. Winter's coming. Thursday will be live with Out of Nowhere. And then Friday night, monetize this. Huge episode Out of Nowhere. Gonna be a lot of fun. Yeah. Thanks, Spaz, for that last dono. Spaz Phoenix has a big fat one. My basement leaking, motherfucker! My basement leaking!